we move on to discuss uh, Mauricio Pochettino. He has emerged as the top candidate for the USMNT managerial position, according to some good sources. Good sources. Um, uh, he has emerged um, since he had left Chelsea at the end of the last season. Um, uh, uh, the Mauricio Pochettino, he actually happens to be um, uh, uh, a, a very top, solid candidate for a lot of positions um, through teams in the top leagues and also national teams. Um, you know, I spoke about this, I believe I spoke about this yesterday when it talked about um, the U.S., the, the England national team, the FA, um, have uh, agreed to to for England to look for a foreign coach if that's what they deem as uh, as the sort of um, the sort of next possibility we know um, Pochettino what he's been able to do in uh, in the Premier League that's definitely something that they can factor in the English FA there's no doubts about it in determining um, their their coach um, especially with the the clearance of getting a foreign coach um, but uh, yes, um, uh, Mauricio Pochettino, uh, 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 he has uh, actually, uh, USSF sporting director Matt Crocker actually spoke to Pochettino in mid-July. Uh, a lot of sources have told, um, uh, told uh, uh, major sports organizations. And uh, yeah, um, the United States, they're going to go ahead and... Uh, um, you know they could go ahead and offer this sort of plan idea to Pochettino, um, and uh, you know it was also revealed that Pochettino is a top candidate, um, and he's one of the favorites uh, for Matt Crocker in the USMNT. Um, it's a uh, It's interesting. It's interesting. It shows that you know the U.S. Soccer Federation has a has some ambition. Has some ambition. They're not trying to go for the easy sort of hire. And I do think, out of all you know, the, you know, out of all the options, you know, the USMNT, out of all the realistic options, if this is even a realistic option itself, the USMNT, the U.S. Soccer Federation, would be privileged. To be able to to get a manager like Mauricio Pochettino, um, they'll be privileged because Mauricio Pochettino, say what you want or not, this is a manager with tactical understanding in terms of he has an identity in terms of how he wants to play. He's gotten a team in terms of consistency. They've gotten consistency. Um, uh, from his teams, especially what he's able to do at Tottenham. He's able to get them playing better than the sum of their parts. He d wasn't able to take the next step ever in his career in terms of winning those big-time trophies, right? But is the U.S. really going to be able to get a caliber of manager like Pochettino that's w that's done it also by winning the Champions League and the Premier Leagues and all that? Are they able to do get that next sort of level of manager? Absolutely not. So, you know, you settle for the best thing there is. And Pochettino, you know, he'll come in and he'll come in with a tactical understanding. He'll come in with a tactical identity. He'll come in and there won't be, you know, there won't be the nonsense that there was under Berhalter. Now, Pochettino, he's not exactly like, you know, this is not, Pochettino is not, um, you know, he's not Bob Bradley or something that's going to come in and, you know, no nonsense, no BS, straight blah, blah, blah. No, you know, he has, you know, he, he is tenth of a player's coach at the same time, a player's manager. But, but he won't stand for the BS, you know. He won't dance around the media questions the way Greg Perhalter does. There's not going to be these horrible lineup choices or these horrible squad choices. Pochettino will choose the best players for the squad. Pochettino will get the players in the right position to be able to play the right style of play. Pochettino will be able to adjust in-game 
tactically, have an understanding of what's going on, and being able to adapt in, in, in crucial situations. Pochettino will provide all that. He's a very, very good manager. He's dealt with egos. He's dealt with the top players. He'll be no nonsense. There won't be any of this BS. And the mentality, too. There'll be a mentality shift amongst these players that a lot of these players have a losing mentality. A lot of these players have a losing mentality. I go back to the Copa America. You get eliminated in a group stage with Bolivia, Panama, Uruguay. A group stage that week, um, you know, Uruguay is a good team, but the rest, that group stage that week, and you don't get out of that group. And after the Copa America, or after the end of that game against Uruguay, um, I believe it was Matt Turner coming out saying, you know, we're still headed in the right direction, blah, 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 blah. Are you kidding me? What a lack of accountability. What a losing mentality. And what a scary place the U.S. soccer has U.S. men's national team find themselves in of things like that has suddenly become unacceptable. It's not acceptable for that. And there is a mentality issue amongst this team. These players, they don't perform the same level that they do for their club. And that's something I also think. Pochettino will be able to maximize the ability of these players. And he'll get, to these, and he'll get these players playing as well as they do for their club. He'll get them to play for that for the national team. Absolutely. I have no doubt about that. I think Pochettino, amongst the realistic options that we have, I think he'll be a solid option. I think he'll be a very solid option. And maybe a change in how he does it in terms of day-to-day -day and international team, maybe he that you know takes him to the next level in the fact that this is the sort of tournaments that he's able to get over the line. Maybe he's just a better you know manager in this sort of setting. Who knows? You don't know. That's why there's that unknown element as well to it that makes us exciting. Because at the end of the day, what we're also trying to do is build a team for 2026, but we're also trying to, you know, build some excitement towards 2026. The U.S. men's soccer team and men's Olympic team, to an extent, have done a very, very, very good job of deflating the fans after the summer and really de-elevating de or it's not, it's, not, it's not a word, but really decreasing the amount of expectations that we have entering a home World Cup. And they've really, you know, put, brought us down, brought us down in terms of the way we think about this team. And there was always, and it, that, and it didn't start off just from the summer. That's the thing, though. I'll add to this. It did not start off from this summer, from this, uh, from this Copa America and these Olympic Games. It can't start it off going all the way back to last year's Nations League against Mexico, of whenever an hour before the game, they announced Greg Berhalter was staying on as the US m &T manager. That's when it started. That's when it started, and it's only gotten worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse from there. So this fan base, we need a rejuvenation heading into the um, heading into the World Cup. We want to start believing again. I go into games with Berhalter thinking, uh, I mean, if we get, to, uh, maybe we can get this result, maybe not. But I know what's coming. We'll eventually get. It. I went into this Copa America, you know, not excited at all. You know, I went into 2016 Copa America excited as heck. I was so excited. I was like, you know, we could get past this group stage, and you know, maybe we can do some things. You know, I went into this Copa America. Uh, we'll pa we'll get past. We'll scrape by Bolivia, Panama, and then we'll probably lose. Maybe get a point against Uruguay, but still, we'll lose on goal differential and not win the group. And then we'll get eliminated by Brazil, or we'll get eliminated by Colombia, or don't even you know we'll get knocked out right away. Um, you know, because I understood that this team has a ceiling with Greg Berhalter. We don't win games that we're not supposed to win. You know, and I think Pochettino coming in, he gives you that sort of you know Pochettino in the international scene. He's more accomplished than a lot of international managers, and you know there won't be many games that we're gonna go up against. If we get, if we can hire Pochettino, if we can hire him, there's not many times that we'll go into games thinking, okay, our manager can get out, out thought in this situation. We're not gonna go into many games thinking that. I think it, with Greg Berhalter at the wheel, we thought, okay, we're gonna have to win in spite of Greg Berhalter. I think it'll go to the point that you, you know. Not only we're not going to think we're going to win in spite of Pochettino. No, I think we can win games because of Pochettino. And for the U.S., that's what you need. That's what you need. You need a, you need a, a coach with tactical understanding to get the best out of the players that we have. That's why I didn't understand Gareth Southgate. That would be a hopeless sort of hire 
for uh, for the U.S. Because the U.S. need a tactically brilliant manager to get us playing better than the sum of our parts. Not someone that'll be positive and they'll keep the group together and that'll be a brilliant man manager. That's not what we need. Uh, we, we need someone that can deal with the mentality of these players and come in and, and, and shift the mentality and get them playing good football and have a tactical understanding of being able to outmanage other coaches. That's what we need to get us play, better players, bet, uh, a, a better team than the sum of our parts. That's what we need. So, you know, I, I think Pochettino would be a great hire. And we'll see if the U.S. can get it done. I think that would be absolutely amazing.